In this lesson, we'll slope the roof of our model. All right, so we're ready to slope this. Now, there's two ways you can actually go about doing this. One would be, uh, because we modeled this making these such large components, we can select these and maybe go to like an elevation view and do a quick, uh, what we've been using up here is our rotate button and doing that. But what that does, it risks positioning your exterior beams in a way that is, you know, to where the top flange is not actually flat or level. It'll actually have that small angle, whatever angle you choose to rock this or or rotate this, it'll actually have these hanging on the beams a little bit incorrect as far as their positioning. So we want to be as accurate as we can with our modeling. So I'll show you a way. It's a little bit tedious, but it's going to make sure that it's this model is going to be done the right way and it'll be accurate. And if we do use this for measurements and all that, we'll have the exact measurements we need. So to do that, basically what I'm going to do is, you, if you recall, and I click on this grid line we created here, you can see there's a distance here. And when we come to the end, or the opposite end, there's basically no distance here. And what's happening here is my image is getting cut off. So if that's happening to you, really quickly, let's go to camera and go back to perspective. And it should bring everything back in to where it needs to be. So basically, we, if you recall, we basically tilted up this grid line to kind of mark where we want our uh, roof to slope. Basically, it was a 0.5 uh, degree slope. Just kind of picked it random. I just wanted to show you how we can get a slope in place. Now, we're not going to just tilt up these uh, giant components. I want to do this going by each level by the beam. So if you recall, when we tilted this, here's our actual grid line. Now, the great thing about the way that we did this was it actually references where we need to be. So in this particular bay, our bay, our beams need to be up here. These beams going this way. In this particular bay, these beams need to be at this point. This bay, these beams need to be at this point. And then the same thing down here. And what you'll notice is basically decreasing every time we go back towards this direction because this was our origin when we tilted it up. So we'll use that basically as a guide so we can start working with our slope. So I'm going to start off with my beam. So let's click on those girders or beams. And what, I, what we need to do is go ahead and select. And if you select this beam and you see the rest of these beams light up, that means we need to go ahead and make it unique. So go ahead and select that top, right click, make unique double click it and we should now be able to highlight and not see anything get affected in the other layers here. So what we need to do is basically take this level by level. So all these beams that are running in this direction, we're going to select them and we're just going to bump them up to that level. All the beams running in this direction, we're going to select them and bump them up to this level. This way we're moving them vertically and not doing any tilting, messing with the uh, orientation of these beams. And in theory, the distance should be uh, smaller and smaller as we go down. So let's get started. So I'm going to go ahead and hit Hold control and I'm going to select my first set of beams that I want to move up here. And we're going to go with the move. And in this case, I'm going to orbit around so I can see this way. And I'm just going to grab this midpoint. And we're going to drag it up, remaining on our blue axis, until we come to that point up here where we need to get to that right height. And the key is, and the trick is really going to be maintaining your position on that blue axis. If you zoom in a lot of times, it will actually help you with that process. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit closer. I want to make sure that line turn, that my dashed line here turns blue so that I position this correctly. And if it doesn't, just kind of rotate around and get it to where you can find that position. And there we go. So that's where we need to be, right here. All right, so then we're going to do the same thing with our next level of beams here. So I'm going to select these beams. Again, holding Control. And then we're just going to bump these up to their appropriate level as well. In this case, it might actually be a little bit easier to move these because they're not on that corner. So we'll go Move. And we'll take these guys and we'll move them up as well. And again, we're going to stay on our blue axis. Bingo. All right, so let's do the same thing for the rest of these last couple of bays here. So I'm going to select my next set. Again, just holding down Control so we can select multiple here. We'll say Move. And again, I just want to move this one up to a grid line point right there. And again, making sure I'm staying on my blue axis. All right, so we have one more to do. We're not going to adjust this very last one because the last area 
down here is actually at our origin, so we don't have to worry about adjusting its height. But we do need to get this area. And then once we have this done, we'll uh, worry about those girders next, or the open web joists, excuse me. So again, we'll select multiple here. Hit your move button. Scroll back in here. Grab at my midpoint and make sure I'm moving up on my blue axis and bingo. So now what that means for us is really all we have to do at this point is make a quick adjustment to the beams going in, in the uh, other direction. So we took care of these, right? So now we'll do the same thing for these. And these will actually use the rotate tool to get accomplished because we're not worried about uh, this position. These can actually be sloped. It's just these here will actually be resting our open web joists on top of. I want those to be as flat as possible. All right. So we'll grab all of these. And once we have all these grabbed, we'll just jump really quickly, jump to a front view, front elevation view. And then we'll use our rotate button to just rotate these. All right. Just about there. Grab our last set here. So now I'm just going to go to front view. And I might need to change my camera view a little bit because we're in perspective. So I'm going to say camera. We'll go to parallel projection. And I want to go to rotate. And we're just going to rotate this system 0.5 degrees. So I'm just going to grab a point here. And I'm going to move it up. And I'm just going to type in my distance. So I'm going to say 0.5. Perfect. So how this looks is everything should line up as far as our beams are concerned. Last thing we're going to need to make an adjustment to will actually be our open web joists. And everything looks good because this beam is meeting this level. This beam is meeting this beam's level. So now let's just tilt this and we'll be ready to roll. So I'm going to go ahead and select those again. Go back to your front view again. Rotate. Find a point to snap at right about there. I'm just going to rotate this up 0.5. So now let's take a look at our progress really quick. Let's make sure everything's sitting on top of a beam. So sitting on top of a beam, we're good. These are all sitting on their beam. And the same thing for those. So if I jump to this front view, we now have a roof that has a slight slope to it. And I know this because I had this perfectly horizontal line going across to kind of mark where I, where I needed the top of that beam to be. So basically this thing slopes up at a you know, half a degree so when rain does hit this structure we'll probably run down fall down here and we'll probably have gutters on this side of our structure if we wanted to build it out but that's how you can go about you know creating your roof creating your roof structure and then adding the sloping feature whatever slope you want to add to it so at this point let's come over here and start doing some cleanup work here I'm gonna get rid of some of this extra line work we really don't need this top one anymore so I'm gonna turn off my layer zero nope can't do that one. Actually, we could probably just hide this one at this point. Really don't need this foundation one. So I'm going to go back to my layer. We'll hide the foundation grid. We won't get rid of it. We might need it later for something else. So we'll just you know, hide it. And again, I'm just doing some clean, some housekeeping here, kind of cleaning things up. So I'm liking where we're at. So what we're going to do next um, is we're going to come back in in the next lesson and we're going to go ahead and adjust make some columns unique that are actually going to be resting in the center of our roof and then we're going to adjust their positioning and their height as well it's fairly straightforward pretty quick process so we'll knock that out really quick and then once that's done we'll jump into getting our lateral bracing so i'll meet you in the next lesson where we'll work with our interior column heights